is to evaluate the person's ability to carry a load 100 feet. The load that is used is the same load that the person used in the third step of the EPIC lift capacity test. In that third step, the person started at 70% of the maximum that he or she achieved in the step one or step two of the ELC. In this case, Margaret's starting with 35 pounds of load. She's going to do two circuits with Janet observing her and recording her heart rate response. Based upon her response to the task, okay, Janet has the option of incrementing the load another 10 pounds. Could you safely independently do that 8 to 12 times a day? Yes. Okay, could you handle more weight? Yes. Okay, let me repeat this one more time. Okay, and the same track one more time, okay? Margaret is again going to do two cycles, walking 50 feet, passing the shelf midway through the 100 feet carry. The idea there is to allow her to put the load down if she's beginning to have difficulty or if the heart rate response is too great. The person's ability to perform this carrying task is rated on a one to five scale from no restrictions to unable. The eleventh stage in the Cal FCP battery is to evaluate the person's ability to climb ten feet while carrying the maximum load that he or she was able to lift in the ELC test number three. This task simulates climbing up and down one ten-foot flight of stairs in an office building carrying the person's maximum acceptable weight. Cadence is counted by the evaluator or a metronome is used to maintain the proper pace. The evaluator requires 60 seconds to complete the task. The evaluee's ability to complete the task is rated according to a five-point ability scale from no restrictions able to complete the task all 15 cycles in one minute to unable. The person is unable to complete 15 cycles within two minutes allowing for a pause or a slower rate of performance. Okay. A last stage in the Cal FCP battery is a standing cool down period. Approximately five minutes is allowed for the evaluee to cool down while the evaluator checks all of the different forms that have been completed during the process of the evaluation. And before the evaluee leaves, the evaluator has an opportunity to make sure that any items that haven't been completed are completed. After the evaluation has been completed, the evaluator completes an evaluation record and report form that is sent off to the referring physician. This provides the physician with key objective information that assists the physician to properly rate the person's prophylactic restrictions and to provide information that can subsequently be used by a disability rater to in a dependable and objective manner rate the extent of the person's disability.